What else you got? Come on, bring on the hard-hitting questions. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Right. Um, do you think that now um, you can, there's a new craze of downloading and streaming Netflix and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and Stargate, all of the Stargates have been on Netflix even over here. Um, do you think you found there's been a new, a newer audience? And how do you feel about that? Is it, is it a good thing? Is it? I, I, I haven't found this as standing. I want to sit. We're sitting. I find that the newer audience. What? I'm standing. I've been sitting all day. I want to stand for a while. Awkward. You don't have to. Well, I do now. I'm oh, sorry. Because it gets weird. If... Can't wait to download it. 
And I was just looking at the ratings and then the tour, and I'm like, if you guys legally watched it and were counted, we would be way more successful. So you clearly want to watch the show, but if because you're not getting counted, there might not be more show for you. It's this weird gray area. But, 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 again, but again, you don't know what, which of those people were in the United States. True. Yeah, they could have not counted. But so, I mean, that's, that's the, the grayish area. But look at Rick and Morty. Who here watched Rick and Morty? Yay. Yesterday or today? Did you guys watch the Evil episode? Schools episode? They released the season three premiere early, it's just for 24 hours. They're streaming it on the Adult Swim website and they aired it on a loop. You can watch it if you watch it today. I'm gonna watch it right But that season doesn't come out until later. I used to pump away here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think if you do it smartly and actually help and boost your stuff, it's weird. The whole system is broken and no one knows how to fix it, so we just kind of keep pretending like it's not broken, kind of like government. But like, it's not working, what do we do? You're not very far off of that. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it's a, it's a transitional phase of, of media, you know, we're, we're finding, from finding out how to do it, YouTube, YouTube's a whole new thing, that they're just learning how to monetize, these kids are millionaires, multi-multi-millionaires from playing video games in their basement. I don't get it, I don't get PewDiePie. It's, it's not, I don't it's not get it, I've tried. Yes, but, but guess how many people get it? I know, I'm a millions. No, it's not about your age, and it's just like you don't watch this show, that's his channel. Yeah, I don't but I don't watch, get the concept. I don't want the, but I don't watch soap operas, and I don't get the concept, I think it's corny and... But I don't understand, I would rather play a video game than watch someone else play a video game, let alone play it badly. He's not good at video games. But it's not... I don't want to watch someone else have bad sex. I'd well, rather have sex. And... <laughs> you mean you'd rather have bad sex? Well, that's just what I call sex. Okay. <laughs> and he never had sex again. <laughs> For the children in the audience today? Yep, yeah, great. <laughs> awesome. awesome. In summation, to answer your question... Yeah. Next question. <laughs> Who knows? Who I have knows? no idea. I mean, I'm excited for some of the content. If it's good, I'm like, I don't know. I think it's a really hard thing. I think the, the thing about downloading in the end is that nowadays, uh, what I've found is from music and, and television and film, and basically anything in the arts, photography, anything, art has now been rendered worthless by binary, by way of binary. And it's a really sad thing because it means that you're going to get really great art as technology gets better and the cost to make things go down and people are able to make stuff from their homes but you're going to lose a lot of the really high level art that does cost a lot of money to make because they just can't be facilitated anymore so there's got to be some sort of equilibrium in there but we haven't found it yet and the difficulty comes where i can't go to um, i can't go to burger king and download a cheeseburger Right? I gotta pay for it. I can't go to whatever your business is and download what you do. But you can take, literally take money out of my mouth and uh, uh, away from my family by downloading. Um, and I can't do that, and there's no other thing. It's only the arts that, that that works for. So it's a really terrible thing, but it's really great when I, Ray Wilson Franks, make a movie for a million dollars and it, it doesn't get a theatrical release, but it's so conceptually good and well done, and the script's amazing, and the acting's amazing, and it, and, and it spreads like wildfire because of downloading, and then I get to do a second project. The problem is that that's very far and few between, and those are only those little few projects that are amazing that get to do that, so the masses are the ones that get wrecked. Um, and you lose your blockbusters, and uh, you lose a lot of the good stuff that you guys really love. Um, you know, Disney and those guys are going to flourish, but it's, it's the middle ground that, that you lose, so, and, and some of the top end. So, so it's like really, um, all I can say is I implore you to go to the, the movie house, go, go in and, and watch film on the big screen, and, um, and limit your downloading to, to things that if you can stream, and if you are a Netflix subscriber, do those things, because it, it does make a difference. And I always say that if you can't, I mean, I like I buy everything. If I if I if I really love it, I'll buy it. You know. Even I said this to the people in Australia that I talked to once because I there's like a if thousand people, people, and I said, "Who here watches the show?" Everyone raised their hand. I said, "Legally," and everyone dropped their hand. Yeah. Um, because they got it like a year later at that time, and they went, "We don't want to wait. It's spoiled for us." And I went, "Okay, that's let's, true. let's pretend that that's fine." But then you go and buy the DVD. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, I'm like, you gotta, you have to show your support somehow, but otherwise the problem, you can't complain when the things you want don't stay on the air. The know? problem is that Somehow. because of downloading DVDs 
are, are nothing in the past. That, I mean, some of them you know, are still releasing box sets and stuff, but those things are, are falling away because that industry is not supported, so they're not going to waste the information. is broken and no one knows how to fix it. So basically, it's this thing where art's free, where it shouldn't be. Because I love hats, but I can't just copy a hat out of zeros and ones on high school. That would be cool, though. Yeah, would, that, that's the matrix. Figure out a way to do it, I know so it's free. Free. Well, then everything's free. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do, but, but that's, that's where it comes in, and that's the difficulty that I have with it. Um, but like I said, I, if there is something that you can't get here and you can't watch, then please watch it, because your fandom, your voice, your love of it is powerful and does have some, some help towards, uh, mm -hmm. towards the project at the same time. Because voices are powerful, individuals are powerful. Yeah. Uh, so to you on today being a bit of a nerd. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to fight? The police? Me. Okay, good. Good answer. Um, another pop song here. Who's going to fight? The Prometheus or Voyager? Prometheus or Voyager? The Daedalus? I mean, <laughs> probably Voyagers from a techno techno standpoint, just from technology. I mean, like that's the old the old battle, you know, the Star Wars versus Star Trek thing. You know, like yeah, they have the Force, but yeah, the technology. Like, time oh, they use the Force, they blew them up with phasers. You know, like the, the higher advanced technology. I think it's just. I don't know. I think Voyager, which is weird for me to say, because I didn't watch all of them. <laughs> I think Voyager. Voyager? Yeah. Probably. I hate saying it, but probably. Unless you're stuck in a new black hole. I don't know, I can go on forever. I, I spiral. That's the same thing that anyone who was by the table yesterday. I could talk for hours about whether or not uh, if Will Riker let go of Thomas Riker's hand, is that suicide or murder? <laughs> Talk about that yesterday. I could talk about it for hours. It's easy to go into a nerd spiral. <laughs> but wait, but this, but, but hold on, but that. That's what conventions are. They're that sitting around nerd spiraling. <laughs> yes. That's hilarious. Hello. Again. Hello. Um, as it's sort of coming towards the Tell us about another cartoon that we didn't know about. No. <laughs> the end of the convention. Are there any questions you wish we'd asked you? <laughs> Backdoor question right there. Um, oof. That's tough. I mean, because you always, it's funny when you do conventions, especially the first time I ever did one, you always think things are going to be way more terrifying than they are. Like, they're going to ask deep questions. Like, what was your subtext during this scene? And what were you thinking when this thing happened? And it's usually like, what's Robert Carlyle like? <laughs> So, so I have all these answers prepared for, for a lot of stories and questions, and I usually don't. I wish you would ask him whatever you just said. <laughs> what do you think of that moment? Uh, lunch is soon. <laughs> I don't remember that. Essentially, that question is like, what cool stories do you have? <laughs> and I'm trying to think of like, which are the best. What's your favorite story from set? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. And then you can ask me a question. Two questions. <laughs> Pull one of these. What's your favorite story from set? Favorite and story from set? What, if you could have written your characters next season on Atlantis, what would you have written? I don't know if my favorite story is on set. Okay, so then just the second um, question. Um, yeah, uh, okay, I have thought about this. I, I would say there was, um, I think it was season four. Atlantis. So later, later in the season, there was an episode called Allies, and I, I thought it was a really missed opportunity for them to have Ford come back and fight alongside them. I always thought it would have been really cool for to have an episode where, uh, at the beginning of the episode, the the gate, uh, the alarm goes off, the gate just opens, and everyone starts freaking out. They're all armed. They're wondering what the hell's going on. They can't close it. They don't know what's happening. And I just walk out like half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then Shepard's like, four? <laughs> what are you doing? Everyone, everyone has a flag in 
the pressure. <laughs> God, I don't worry about it. Four. And then what we've got is it's always just like it's just nasal. <laughs> Four. Um, like where were you? You know. And um, and I and I don't really tell them much. I just kind of I just basically say that I know that these you know the the rates are coming and, and that uh, things are about to get really bad and uh, so you're going to need my help. And um, and then I basically fight everyone, murder everyone. <laughs> don't really talk to them very much. And, uh, yeah, and then just sort of slink off back into my hole. And the idea is that you're like, you're welcome. No, I just don't. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Because I, I think that you know it would have been a really cool thing because they, you know, I always thought that there was a whole thing where that was, you know, he's a marine. There's no man left behind, and he got left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, they really just sort of stopped looking for him. And uh, I think it would have been cool and sort of shoving it back in their face for him to save them again, and uh, and then just leave because he's not he's, he he still cares about them, but he he doesn't care for their uh, for them to care about him anymore. Oh, no. So I don't know. I thought that would have been really cool. I just always thought he, he should come back. And also maybe he comes back and he's perfected the enzyme, so he's he's not crazy anymore. He's just sort of emotionally hurt. <laughs> by them leaving him away. But he's, he's perfected it, and he shows them, and he's just super strong, and he just leaves, and he doesn't actually give it to them. You know, so, it could have been weird. I don't know. It's like an emo for it. <laughs> it's like a really I'm going to help him if they don't like it. Yeah. What about yourself? Same question. Wow. That's, that's, that's the equivalent of what would have happened in season three. No, it isn't. Uh, You're not Brad Wright. Right. No, I, I liked what they were doing. doing. I, I trusted them. But he can't tell you. No, no. <laughs> From the beginning. I almost did not audition for the show because the, the role, the description of the breakdown, whoever wrote it, it, was, it sounded like David Hewlett. It was like sarcastic and untested wit. I'm like, so McKay? I don't want to be McKay. David Hewlett's awesome. But when I read the script, it was cool and interesting and different, and I, I, I kind of just jumped into it going, I trust whatever they do. For the most part, I never really, I'm not the kind of actor who has notes on, on a project. I just do what they write and try to make it the best I can. The closest I ever came, um, between seasons one and two, because I write, and Rainbow also writes, we sort of <laughs> slowly writing a project together, actually. Very slowly. Very slowly. Uh, it'll, it'll be awesome. awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. It'll be the best thing you guys have ever read. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be so cool. You're going to really love it. It's going to be amazing. Whatever you're imagining, whatever you're imagining. Better than anything you could imagine. You're not even getting no way. <laughs> Between seasons one and two, I was kind of just practicing my writing skills. I was half drunk and bored, and I just had an interesting idea, I thought, for something that would have happened in Stargate Universe. So for fun, I started writing an episode. I thought it would just be a cool episode for what would have been season two at the time. And it ended up becoming a two-part episode. Very, very different two-part episode. Essentially them cool. discovering the seed ships on that side, and it was insane, like it was so much stuff happened, like the first one was almost horror-like, and the second one was very fantasy, sci-fi, like action-driven, and I finished it, and I showed my, my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, yeah, I just wrote this for fun, and she's like, this is actually, you should send this to someone, I sent it to my lawyer, it's for fun, and he went, he said, I didn't even consider that, literally, it was, it was almost like fan fiction, like I just wrote something that I thought would be fun to test my screenwriting skills, but my lawyer even said, send this to Brad and Rob, send it to them. I think they're going to like that you like the show this much. And so just on a whim, I was like, Hey guys, I wrote this during the hiatus. I thought you'd find it fun. I don't think I prefaced it correctly. Because they took it as a spec script that I was pitching to them. Uh, that's what so it kind of stepped on some toes. Um, because I think they thought I was trying to like put my, my name in as a writer, which I, if I knew, I would have tried even harder. I was just literally like, look what I wrote, isn't it pretty? <laughs> Like in it, oh my god, in it in episode in the first episode, there's the, the ship starts kind of malfunctioning. It starts very alien-like, like Eli's listening to a walkie-talkie and the batteries start dying and the music slows down to a weird crawl, and then Aquino starts flying around on its own and everyone can't figure out who's controlling it. Weird stuff happening. And then at one point a door just slams shut on Rear's hand and it breaks his wrist. Uh, like it's dark. But then they end up discovering the seed ship, and it's kind of interesting. Um, but I remember Brad came up to me and he's like, well, you knew we were going to do this one thing, so why did you want to write that? And I went, I wasn't trying to tell you that I wanted to write it. I was just like, isn't that cool? And then they said something to me that was just a, a nice writing lesson. He said, also, you can't break the wrists of one of your leads 
you can break an arm. You can't make the risk because that affects who he is for the rest of the show. And I'm like, well, that did it. It was for fun. I wasn't doing it. <laughs> You're right. I know. It's <laughs> not much <looks> cool. <laughs> um, but I, it's, I liked it. It's like, it was an interesting script. I think mean, it would have been cool to do it. I wish I had taken the opportunity, not that there was time, but to then go, okay, well, you know I can write. Can I write an episode? Yeah, of course. Because I know we all wanted to direct. I know Carlisle was going to direct in season three. Uh, Brian and I both wanted to and would sometimes shadow directors on set if we wanted to direct uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, I wanted to, from a, from a purely wish perspective, I would have loved to bring Gin back in some way because I loved working with Julie. I like the idea that Eli was finally getting some. Um, it was a dream season. But, <laughs> but wow, this is the most I've ever alluded to it. But I will say that there would have been something like that in season three. Mm -hmm. Some sexy yeah. times? Something involving Gin. Some sexy times? You are here. You, 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 you want to hear the saddest story ever? Yes. I've never had a love scene on camera. But recently, the oh, no, that's not the saddest part. In the past, in the past year, I've done five movies and I've had a bunch of makeout scenes. Finally, lost my weight when they let me make out on camera. Uh, but I was so excited to have, like, when they wrote the, the scene where Gin and Eli look up and, and Ray knocks on the door and the door opens and it's full sweaty Gin and Eli. And originally, the script was full penetration. <laughs> Uh, Gin is sweaty and Ray kind of sees Eli's shirt and goes, Eli? And originally my hand popped up on the other side of the bed. I was like, hi. I was like, yeah, I get to sort of have a love scene on camera. And we were, I went to set to go shoot that day. And they went, hey, Dave, can we talk to you in production real fast? I was like, OK. And I went and ended up having a long meeting. I missed it. They shot it without me. My first love scene ever. I wasn't even on stage. I wasn't even in the building on the other side of the place. But I still give Julie McNaven, who is awesome, the most props. She made, sorry, children, your moms. Um, they, she made me look good. She not, she could have done anything like, oh, hey, oh yeah, I'm fucking up. She was like, hey, how you doing? I was like, oh, thank you, Julie, thank you so much. You really made it look like Eli had some skills. Thank you. She could have gone the other way. Do you need me? Do you need me? I'll come with you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, it's a little. It's all we've got. No. The way you required elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow Sunshine today. Thank you guys. You're awesome.